Hello everyone and welcome back to White Run Racing. Today we'll make some considerations on the intake phase and on its management regarding the small Vespas. So, among other reasons we decided to make this video was because it was requested by various people and therefore we will address the discussion on Vespa Smalls that we have postponed until now because we had to find some crankshafts. In short, neither Damiano nor I have a small Vespa, I only have an ET3 and therefore we have less of these things. So here you see lined up a shaft of the original Vespa P PKS a shaft of the original Vespa HP 50, a so-called aftermarket, aftermarket racing shaft, this is in particular, it is a Mac Aur. otherwise there was the MDP which was uh, practically identical, then a Pinasco, an old one from the 80s, which has a resin filling, this was a novelty from Pinasco back then, and I anticipated this too. And then a, a very used shaft of a Vespa Primavera ET3, and a shaft of the PK125 ETS, the same in the cone to that of the 125XL, therefore with the bearing as large as the PX. Excellent shaft. We have already measured the phases of all these uh, shafts before, because otherwise the procedure becomes longer. We are showing you how to do it. Now the first uh, we will look at is this shaft, which is an original PK, actually this is already PKXL, maybe I already said S before, but it has the large thread and cone 20. This is PK, PKXL. Keep in mind that Piaggio has been making this shaft in the 50s version for decades. There are various types of, well, with even slightly different uh, phases, and also with a different shape of the hand wheel, flywheel side. See uh, how bigger this one is here, how bigger than HP. But there are shafts with tight timing of the special that have this flywheel as big as that, and then there are, and there are shafts that have, um, have a slightly wider face than this, which is really, really tight. Among other things, I only measure the shafts with the large cone because I have the possibility to fix an easy to use protractor only on this thread. Otherwise, I would have had to adapt uh, to the cardboard one, but would have been a waste of time. So it's only uh, the concept that I want to expose you. Um, also, keep in mind that the valve timing was measured in, in the overall value and also more or less in the advanced delay, although not with maniacal precision. Uh, both because the crankcase in the valve was slightly worked, so I had to tie the processing made, and because what we want to do is, is a general reference discourse to give you a generic indication that you can use. Let's start with the original shaft with tighter timing. We have now turned it around to show each intake cut. Here it is, you see? It can also be seen by eye that it's very closed. And this here has had a phase measured of just 130 degrees overall, divided by 93 in advance and 35 in delay. So, suitable for the 50, but already with, an hour, with a two narrow phase, even for a 75. Then this is the shaft of the Vespa HP, which as you can also see, uh, very well to the eye is much more open and in fact has a surprisingly wide phase 110 intake and 45 delay therefore 155 degrees overall and keep in mind that on this value i have already done the tear of the valve processing so this phase comes with a standard valve if the port on the valve is worked you gain several and very important degrees of delay. 
At standard timing, this shaft is perfect for a smooth 75 delivery, and among other things, uh, being the wide timing for the 50 and therefore uh, a very full hand wheel, <coughs> reduces the crankcase volume a little to the benefit of elasticity. Then below we have uh, this Macaur, which has a facing of a few degrees more than the HP. 118 in advance and 42 in delay, so 160 degrees overall. This is a shaft that is also very suitable for a 100, also because having a lot of advance allows you to work the valve. On the delay without, without touching the shaft near the crank button, to easily get from 42 to almost 60 degrees of delay, with this you can get there. Then there is the Pinasco, which always has a total of 160 degrees, but differently distributed. That is, it has less advance and more delay, a single 105 degrees advance and 55 degrees delay. Pinasco has also adapted uh, the, uh, this phase because if it had anticipated more, that is by removing further material from this part, he would have further unbalanced it. So the choice is certainly due to this fact. Of course, this shaft allows you to have a very considerable delay and anticipating it um, even a bit, even a little bit, you can have a really large phase. Then there are the shafts of the Vespa 125, I only measured that of the ETS, which however is identical in timing more or less to that of the ET3. Almost nothing changes. And this is one here is 160 degrees 2 and it's 125.40. Now we've shown you the measures only for which phase is preparatory to um, a speech about the management of the intake phase on small engines uh, and what can be done with more or less performing intake valve engines of greater or lesser displacement. So let's get to the crankcase. This crankcase here is from a Vespa PK already with three manifold fixing holes whose intake port has been slightly machined. There could be four millimeters more originally ended here more or less. Much more could be done. Careful because in order to, uh, to do a lot you have to fill this cavity in some way Maybe here the place lends itself to two component resin by making appropriate notches on the casing to prevent the cap from slipping off to give the manifold the right shape immediately before the valve. Because in this way, as it is, if you work straight to lengthen, the valve breaks. Therefore, if you intend to do this work before breaking through, a well made racing cap must be placed so that you can do a good job. We strongly advise against uh, welding overlay because um, in any case it induces deformations and it is appropriate to do it only in those places where the resin cannot make up for it because otherwise more damage is done than benefits overall. So in order to um, evaluate the opportunity to lengthen where and by how much the intake phase, the displacement and clearly also the desired delivery range must be taken into consideration. With smaller displacement it is good to be careful because with the delay, especially with the delay because otherwise regurgitation is induced. Moreover, the more you work the crankshaft, the more the crankcase becomes empty. So this too is a parameter to take into consideration, especially with small displacement uh, because the variation in the percentage of volume determined by the movement of the piston is smaller if the displacement is small. Therefore, even modest material removals can be very influential. As always, and as 
in all engines, uh, the intake delay is a very important parameter and has a greater effect for, uh, than the advance uh, and more pronounced contraindications if the uh, downsides if the mark is exceeded. Two very important considerations. One, on a small, um, the intake manifold is incomparably longer than on the large. Um, in particular, I measured approximately uh, from here to here. At the beginning of the carburetor, it's 21 centimeters without considering the curves. So it would be at last at least 23 and in addition there is an extra centimeter here too. So against the 6 of the SI carburetor of the PX, plus the thickness of the crown case of the PX, which is less than this, it's about 8 centimeters. We'll be around 25 overall here. The difference is huge, so the regurgitation is strongly hampered by the longer hair column. It's also true, however, that the cutter of the uh, small on the small is less bulky on itself by a lot. Also, because the connecting rod is shorter, in particular, 87 mm for the short stroke and 97 mm for the long stroke. But the compression height of the long stroke varies little from that of the PX, so the crankcase is smaller anyway. Nonetheless, on engines of a certain displacement, therefore starting from 100 and upwards and performing, it is, it is possible to easily push toward substantial delays without downsides. An important consideration always, especially today that we are dealing with Vespas small, that are in the hands of younger kids. Take advantage of these uh, technical considerations, but avoid modifying the vehicles that circulate on the road, because it's forbidden. So, these explanations concern the world of racing and tests to be done on closed circuits. On the street it's not good, it's not legal above all to drive with tempered vehicles. Among other things, I, yeah, I tell everyone, I see on YouTube many videos of people running around with the camera on things that resemble missiles uh, on Quattrini uh, M200 uh, stuff with 40 horsepower, they quietly shoot their videos and post it. I, I would be very cautious about doing certain things because it really is a crime, it's illegal. In fact, on this channel you will never see videos of illegal vehicles uh, going around on the street, much less will we have a provide comprehensive recipes, as someone has also asked us uh, on modifications of road engines to drive around. We deal with aspects and we disseminate on, on things that concern our experiences and acquired skills, our passion, but it ends here. Now, let's go back to the topic of today's video and close with some uh, considerations about the evolution of the small 125 engines, uh, therefore Piaggio long stroke, uh, original in this case. Here are the two shafts, this is uh, Primavera ET3 and this is ETS. The shaft of the ET3 differs from that of the two port Primavera because it has a considerable advance and an extra intake. Spring has a more closed phase. I do not know. I do not, I do not now have a Primavera shot to show you. Now I've made measurements. The very rare times that I happen to get my hands on it. However, the phase is much tighter. So the ETS and the ET3 have the same intake phase. It really changes little. But the huge difference is in the crankcase. The one of the ETS, which I cannot show you now. Uh, has a much uh, larger intake hole. That is, the port that faces the crank chamber is similar, but the inlet hole is much wider and well connected. And then 
the biggest difference lies in the upstream intake system. There is, uh, this is the classic 19 of the Vespa Primavera and ET3 with its 90 manifold with double curve. It's a classic 19. Instead, this is the manifold with a nominal diameter of 20. So the ETS calibrator is 20, but it's very it's a very particular 20, which has a very wide splay at the beginning. So it starts at 24, then the duct begins, which is about 22, and ends at 20 near the guillotine, and so it closes. But then the manifold is 23 internal diameter. Among other things, the excavator will certainly lend itself to an enlargement of at least a couple of millimeters by removing the sprayer when hot and having it rectified, because the downstream manifold is able to tolerate this greater flow with, without reducing the depression in the carburetor. This is the very important thing. So the difference in performance between ETS and ET3 was there. Among other things, the ETS muffler had something more than the ET3 torpedo, although the aftermarket version in production now that copy the ETS muffler are even better a bit of lower commercial value. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Remember, White One Racing is not a workshop, but an amateur sport association that works on engines only for sport purposes and only for its associates.